How is it that we can sometimes feel so dominant yet at the same time so submissive? How is it that sometimes we feel we need to cultivate that masculine energy like it's lacking within us, but at other times we need to cultivate that feminine energy because our dominance is overpowering us and our ego is wild and out of control? How do we balance the energy of the number one and the number two? It's a bit of a contradictory and rocky road for the life path number 11, but do you know what? We've got a walk. Business through lyrics is the thing that I do best and fuck I love it so they'll love it cause it's coming from my chest. I made a home in me and now I'm free to carry on my quest. I ain't done, no I ain't done until I've built my mum a nest. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Holly Williams. At the moment my work goes underneath In Me Arten which means the light within me. The light was cultivated in the darkness so don't forget that. Anyway. I'm making another life path 11 number because the last one did so well and I am a life path number 11 and you know since I found out that I was a life path number 11 when I was maybe like 21 um, I've gone through various phases of life in which I have reread about the life path number and you know almost resonated with it in different ways and now that I'm coming up to 30 I think I understand like a lot more about the life path number and, and, and just sort of about the journey of, of being a life path number 11 um, and, and kind of how it feels. I resonate a lot with the information. So I'm basically going to read through a life path number 11 thing and sort of talk about it. But the main thing that I want to kind of touch on today, I guess, is the balancing of the number one and the number two. And the reason that I'm going to read through this is because I just think it will be much easier for me to be sort of in a natural flow responding to information that I'm reading on the screen as opposed to me trying to think on the spot because I don't know I just think it's way more natural to just be naturally you and yeah just forget that I'm speaking to the camera and also doing my research so um I've got a couple of things up I'm using somebody called FeliciaBender.com as the website that I'm reading about life path 11 from if you have my if you have the master number 11 as your life path on top of the basic characteristics of the number two you have added strengths and also more intense challenges and so this is kind of what I'm talking about um the number one being a number 11 you have two of the number ones right and then you but it singles down to a number two and so it's like kind of funny because it's almost contradicting energies, do you know what I mean? You've got the energy of the number one that's coming in doubly strong, but your base, or you come back down to the base of the number two, and it's quite a weird little mix because, um, yeah, they're kind of like opposing numbers in, in some way, shape or form. And so I do think that for life path 11s, and, and not just necessarily for life path 11s, but being a life path number 11 and resonating with some of this information, I have personally found that balancing the elements of masculine and feminine have definitely been a challenge for me. And I don't know if it's going to be um, a deeper challenge for femi to, to master the feminine energy or to master the masculine energy for different individuals. But for me, 100%, there has been some form of need to balance those, those two energies. So if you look at me, I'm masculine appearing. If you listen to me, I think if you know me or you know I, as a child I was called sensitive you know I was a sensitive child like I would definitely say I re resonated with the feminine energies the energy of the number two like a lot more sort of came from me um and yeah I would say that I struggled more with the masculine energy or to cultivate it but at the same time which is the, the number one energy but at the same time I do have a lot of that number one energy it's just when I'm in my most comfortable position right and so I'm I have a lot of masculine energy where I'm comfortable and when I guess I'm out of my comfort zone, I have more of that feminine energy. And I guess I had to learn how to cultivate that masculine energy when I'm outside of my comfort zone as well, you know, and, and how to how to cultivate it, yeah, where I cannot, where I struggle to cultivate it. That might be around super extra, super extra masculine men, you know, maybe that's that that does or has challenged me in the past and I'm actually putting myself into a new position now, into a new job in which hopefully it, I'm going to be around a lot of hyper-masculine men, potentially, and that will help me to develop more so that number one energy where it may still be weak, you know? Um, so, 
yeah, um, I've had to sort of learn, and I think that some of us have to learn how to attain that balance. In our comfort zone, we might be very strong-willed, strong, strong, show that one energy, but then, you know, when we start a new job or we go here or we're around more dominant people than us, somebody who's just a number one energy or something, then we maybe sit back and sink into that feminine energy and are a bit more soft and, and, and need to know how to cultivate the masculine energy, but then at the same time need, need to learn how to cultivate the feminine energy in our in our comfort environment you know where our ego wants to take over wherever that may be so um so yeah i mean i think that's kind of like an interesting sort of part of the um life path number 11 journey um so let's i mean let's just have a look attributes of the number one i'm on numerologyblogspot.com um, this is one of the best sites that I have ever used to learn numerology. I just think it's b brilliant, like, and, um, and I think whilst I'm on here, let's just share everything because this is just an amazing website. So I, I look at, I always come to numerology blogs, but when I'm looking up numerology and trying to learn more about it and just check, you know, get any more extra insight than I've been able to think of from my own mind. So, um, yeah. Number one resonates with the vibrations and attributes of new beginnings, creation, independence, uniqueness, motivation, striving forward and progress, ambition and willpower, positivity and positiveness. It also as it resonates with the energies of pioneering, raw energy, force, activity, self-leadership and assertiveness, initiative, instinct and intuition. And honestly, this is something that for me has taken a long time to bring to the forefront. You know, like to really get to come forward in me. I embrace the new like never before these days, but perhaps it wasn't like that. I mean, I think it always was, you know, and you might feel that force, but I didn't feel it as strongly as I do now. And I think I've really only just started to really cultivate the energy of the number one, but in the nicest way possible. You know, I would actually say that, you know, I had the energy of the number one previously, but in the more negative aspect. So let's kind of have a look at the um, negative traits. So single mindedness, intolerance, conceit, narrow mindedness, lacking in emotion and being weak willed, dependence, um, aggression, arrogance and dominance self-satisfied, inconsiderate, stubbornness, single-minded, intolerant, conceited, I think it goes all over, all over all of those words again. And look, some of them I don't resonate with so much, like, oh, maybe, maybe single-mindedness, maybe it's actually single-minded to say I don't resonate with single-mindedness, perhaps I have been single-minded, perhaps I have been single-minded, if I reflect, have I been single-minded? Potentially, but definitely more so like, you know, um, arrogance, dominance, Ag hmm, aggression in some way shape or form towards my own goals or aggression and frustration a lot of those types of feelings for you know towards my desires and my wants desire for power and my own power you know like almost not wanting to share everything whereas now I'm like numerology, blog, numerology blogspot let's get it out there let's everybody use it let's all grow together like at some point in my life I was definitely had more of a barrier to wanting to share because I wanted my recognition whereas now it's like just just give, do you know what I mean? And I think that now that one comes through in that way um, and, and before it had perhaps been a, a lot more of a selfish, a selfish one energy where it was like, oh, I want to be number one. Um, you know, whereas, you know, now it's maybe, maybe the double one is like, let's be number ones together. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know, but it's definitely developed. And I don't know if anybody listening to this also has that type of a thing or has ever experienced that. What I would suggest doing is looking at positive and negative traits of that number one energy and seeing which one you are most tapped into if you even are tapped into it and work to gain that balance. And then look at the attributes of the number two. So positive traits, diplomat, friend, artist, enduring, peacemaker, gentle, kind, charming, insightful, sensitive, team player, ambitious, spiritual, well-mannered, placid, just, unselfish, harmonious, sociable, supportive, attention to detail, cooperative, decisive, poise, intuitive, adaptable, agreeable, cautious, considerate, emotional, flexible, loving, understanding, consideration, grace, devotion, the subconscious, balance, meditation. And you know, obviously, I think that 
the base of the 11, life path number 11 is the two, and perhaps a lot of 11s actually do resonate with the energy of the number two. I definitely resonate with more of this kind of stuff. I was definitely seen as gentle, kind, you know, I was probably a bit of a people pleaser, have been a bit of a people pleaser, I have to remind myself not to be a bit of a people pleaser. I, I genuinely, I would say I put other people before myself, um, and, and again, you know, you just need to balance the two. Obviously, you want to put people before yourself, you want to nurture and you want to care, but sometimes that number one energy needs to come in and say, no, right now I need to look after myself, you know, in, in the nicest way. You know, sometimes the two energy can be our weakness, um, you know, because, because it can be. So looking at the negative traits, indifferent, unable to take responsibility, which I've been there, fearful, I've been there, weak-willed, I've been there, submissive, you know, I've been dominant of the number one, and I've been submissive as well. You know, as soon as you're around somebody that's more dominant, because number one doesn't really come through in the backbone, it comes through in the knowing that you have something to do, you know, in the knowing that you have something to say, but it isn't really your backbone. You know, it's something that drives you from some place that, you know, no, you know you're on a mission, but it, it just doesn't necessarily like pour from you in terms of like, you know, it doesn't just pour from you so much. More so the two, at least for me. Um, submissive, pessimistic, dependent, indecisive, hesitation, lack of balance, unsteady, unstable, insensitive, inflexible, disagreeable, stagnant, inconsiderate, unemotional, unloving, fears making mistakes, fears unplanned change, fears being alone, fear of the unknown. Um, and you know, I, I definitely have resonated with a lot of the positive aspects of the number two energy, but also a lot of the negative aspects of the number two energy, um, which means I think I, I think I was more so the number two. And so I just, I just guess that basically something for us 11s to do is to really study the masculine and feminine energy and try and bring them into some harmonious balance. You know, try and be aware of when you are overly exuding feminine energy and it's kind of, it's kind of to the point at which it's deconstructive. Um, I think all energy is just either constructive or sorry, deconstructive, de constructive or destructive. I don't think it's good, I don't think it's bad, not necessarily positive or negative, just we build or we break. And sometimes breaking is necessary, do you know what I mean? Sometimes we need to break down to rebuild. You know, we just go through life making a bunch of mistakes almost and just learning from them, taking a bunch of actions and analyzing and learning from them. So looking at the energy of the number one and the energy of the number two, and figuring out the con constructive aspects and the destructive aspects of both of them and learning to recognize when you are in those and what is it that you need to cultivate is it more of that number one energy is it more of that number two energy could it be that you have enough number one energy in the in the home but not in the workplace yeah and is it good number one energy in the home or is it or is it constructive number one energy in the home or is it destructive number one energy in the home and then then where do you go with that if it's destructive how do you make it constructive do you need to bring some more of that two energy that you naturally have everywhere else into the home where in life do you need to work on these energies these one and two energies these masculine and feminine energies how can you bring them into into the yin yang symbol do you know what i mean into this beautiful balance that exudes both masculinity and femininity because when we have that as the 11 the number one energy and the number two energy the masculine force and the feminine force when they come together as one and this isn't just for life path number 11 but it's for everyone but when they come together as one we get three you know the chance for creation and that is when we really get to create the the most beautiful pieces of work you know not male or female masculine and feminine energy when they support each other beautifully we get three because masculine is one feminine is two they come together and they combine and now there's three and there's the chance for creation and and that is i think when the most beautiful types of creations come through when you are both strong and submissive when you are both dominant and submissive when you know how to stand in your power but you know that sometimes submission is power you know when, when you can find the strength in submission but when you can also 
stand up for what you believe in and stand up for you and and say what it is that you have to say without feeling like you have to hide it and it's a different it's a difficult thing i think for the life path number 11 but it's an essential thing and that's basically as far as i'm going to bloody go with this video because i think it's been going on for a long time and i didn't even really read much of this <laughs> this website but that's what i mean i think it just needed to trigger me into talking so um, so yeah, um, I'll put obviously the links below to the to the site that I use. I didn't read it all, but I'm going to make more of these videos about life path number eleven. So please let me know if there's any sort of things that you're wondering about the life path number eleven. A lot of people responded greatly to the video, and um, and yeah, like you know, if there's anything that I can talk about, I would love to talk about it. I love talking, so um, so yeah, please comment below, um, guys. If you made it this far. I really appreciate your time and your energy, your views and your comments when you drop them. So um, thank you for that. And, you know, if you like this content, I've got to say it, subscribe. If you don't ask, you don't get. If you like this content, subscribe to my channel. That will help me greatly to when I'm uh, in regards to the goals that I'm working towards and the lifestyle that I'm tr trying to create. Like it if you like it. That also helps. Um, and share it if you want to share it. Subscribe to the channel. I don't even know how this outro thingy goes. I'm not that great at it. But thank you very much for spending your time on my channel. And I'll see you in the next video.